What's going on guys? Thanks for coming back for another video. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough through our wonderful bandwagon. We've already been living in here for the past three weeks and I'm gonna give you a tour of the inside. So um, yeah, let me flip my camera around. This is what a bandwagon looks like. The official bandwagon company is based in Indiana. <clears throat> And that is typically where drivers will fly out to in order to pick up the wagon and then drive it to whatever destination uh, or location your tour is going to start in. We're currently in Atlanta, Georgia. We have a show here tonight. The band is inside doing uh, or wrapping up their sound check. So I figured I'd take a couple minutes and show you the inside. So let's take a look. So first things first, our driver uh, lives and sleeps in the cab. So. Aside from the driving portion of it, there is also a back area where the driver has a bunk, they have access to power, um, air conditioning, etc. It is fairly quiet in there, especially because sometimes we park outside of loud venues, and so he needs to, he or she needs to be able to get some quality sleep, uh, and they're able to achieve it with this back cab section. So coming up to the door here, I always lock the uh, bandwagon when no one's in it, especially when we're in cities that are perhaps less desirable than others or unsafe. Uh, typical lock there. We have a step up here which kind of moves in and out. When we're on the road, we close it obviously. When we're here, we keep it open. But uh, yeah, let's take a look. So when we come in, this is the general layout and overview of what this thing looks like. Um, we'll start over on this section here, kind of towards the front, and I do apologize, it's a little messy. Again, we're on a bus with 10 dudes, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a pigsty. I'm kind of OCD, so I like wipe down the counters, take out the trash every day, um, because hygiene is important. So starting at the front, we do have a TV right here. This comes, I believe, standard in all bandwagons. This uh, television, we have an Xbox connected to it. This is great for the guys to play Madden and other uh, other games on the Xbox when we have downtime or we're on the road for a long time. Um, up top over here, we have some additional storage, which people kind of use depending on who needs it the most. Uh, of course, we have our refrigerator here, kind of on a smaller on the smaller size, um, but it is fully functional. The one thing about these fridges is that when we're on the road for a long time, eventually the seal kind of gets loose. And if we're moving around a lot on the road, these doors just sort of swing open. And so we've actually um, been taping with some gaff tape, taping the door to the, to the side here. Then over here, we have uh, kind of our kitchenette area. This opens up to the garbage chute, which is right here, which I should probably take that out. And we can also access the garbage can down here. I always make it a point to run to like a Costco and buy some, some large, hefty 30 gallon bags uh, for, the, for the trash. Of course, we have standard uh, shelving options for whatever we want to put in. We put in, uh, you know, napkins, plates, paper cups. Uh, we have a lot of vitamins and things like that that we sort of store. Coffee material here, uh, hot water, the band loves tea, toasters, snacks, things like that hand sanitizer, all that stuff kind of lives in this area. Um, we do have a microwave also. One thing that's very important is when you get it into a bandwagon, you've got to take out the, um, the glass plate and we keep that just in one of the drawers here because when you're on the road and this thing opens, that glass plate could come flying out and it has done that and it could definitely injure somebody. The next section here is the seating, uh, two, two to three person couches. Um, Pretty comfortable, pretty standard. Everything up top here, all these cupboards are open and available. And the way that I usually run the bus is we sort of allocate cupboards for different people. So like this is for our bass player, that's for our vocalist. Um, there's also cubbies underneath the couch. And so like I've claimed this one here, there's also a couple on this side. So when you get into a tour bus or a bandwagon, it's important to make note of whose uh, cubbies are whose. Coming over here, this is the TM tour manager table. This is where I get most of my work done. And um, this is where I keep like my radios. There is a power strip that comes with the, the bandwagon, but if yours didn't for some reason, uh, there's just an outlet down below. You can plug your own in here. Um, great spot just to get some work done, advancing, etc. all the emails. 
window access is nice as well. A little bit of storage space underneath. Um, sometimes I'll put things underneath the, the seat itself if we need that extra room. But uh, yeah, this is where I spend most of my time as a TM on the road. Up top here, we have a few things to point out. Um, we do have multiple light sources. We have like this ambient light, which is, I guess, this guy here. And then we have a primary overhead light and those kind of run all along the side of the bus. So if you needed additional light, you could just flip these guys on, etc. There are two or rather three air conditioning slash heater units. Um, pretty, pretty standard. You choose uh, cold versus hot, fan power, vents open, closed. It's important to note that if you are in a humid area, uh, like in the south, you probably don't want to keep the cold going nonstop because that will cause condensation to build up and that will eventually fall on people and possibly even damage the, the conditioner itself. And uh, this is our heater, it puts out a lot of heat. We used this at the first part of the tour when we were in like Colorado. But now that we're in Florida and Georgia, we don't really need this as much. Okay, and then here are the bunks. Um, so there's in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bunks here. Uh, so we have 10 people, including the driver. So everybody gets a bunk. And let me show you what mine looks like. And I apologize, I didn't really make my bed today. But here's my bunk. So first things first, we do have these blackout curtains that slide and, and close the bunk, which is really nice to close when uh, you know, the guys were wanting to party or something, or you have to take a nap during the day. These do a great job of blacking out the area. Uh, in here, so a couple interesting facts. Uh, there's this vent right here, which is actually controlled with this switch. So when you're in these bunks, it can get a little stuffy. So using this um, switch will turn on an air, uh, an air system here, which can blow on you and kind of keep the air flowing into your bunk. Having the outlet here is also great because you can charge your phone, whatever, etc. A um, little bit of a netted area. This is where I just keep some personal items. I'll usually put like my phone in here at night and also my tour credentials when I'm not using them. And then this is kind of the overview of the size of the of the uh, bunk. I'm able to lay in here relatively comfortably. Um, if I want to, I can scoot down and my feet can't touch the wall. My head comes like somewhere up to here. So I have a little bit of headroom. Um, I will say that these these three bunks at the beginning of the bandwagon are a lot smaller than the other six in the back. Uh, so typically this is for like crew. Uh, so I'm here, we have our media person up here, and then we have our front of house person here. Uh, again, just for crew, just so the band can actually have the more comfortable bunks. And so yeah, that's kind of the, the overview of the bunk situation. Also, I will say on this side of the bus is where the generator is down below. So these bunks and these bunks here kind of hear a little bit more noise uh, at night or when the generator's on. So something to think about. But if you have any questions about the bunk situation, uh, let me know, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Okay, so we come back here, we have two doors. The first one on the left here is gonna be your bathroom and there's a switch up top which uh, turns on the light. Here's a pretty standard bathroom setup. Uh, bandwagons, pretty typical rule. Nobody takes a shit on the bandwagon. If you have to go to number two, you have to find a restroom or a gas station or use it in the venue or something because we don't want to travel with all that crap, literally. Uh, so this is really just using uh, the restroom when you gotta take a pee. Uh, this, these are kind of misleading. There's really no storage up here. In fact, it's actually just opened up through the bottom. It's just for electrical, so can't really store anything in here, but I often find myself when I'm using this bathroom, like leaning up against the wall while the bus is moving because it gets very, very shaky. Then the final room, hold on, it's a little dark. Let me get the light on, there we go, is the bathroom slash shower situation. So again, at the very back of the bus here, this is where we have our showers. Um, so I'll show you that first very standard uh, shower here. Most of the guys use this after show if the venue doesn't have a shower. But again, we have to be conscious of how much water we use because obviously we have to travel with it ourselves. So we try to use this sparingly and when we do use it, it's military style. Meaning, you know, you get in there, put a little bit of water on, scrub, use the soap, and then turn the water back on, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty quick and, and concise. A uh, little, some hanging space here for towels and things like that. And then this is sort of the, the sink area. 
Um, a little bit of storage up top, which we kind of use for personal bathroom items as we need to. Um, this is the water pump. So if you want to use the water, this needs to be on. It should be off right now because nobody's here. Uh, when we're not using it, it's important to leave this off because if it's on, uh, it's possible that some of the water, like you may have seen the water was sort of running from the shower head. Um, it just kind of drains the water faster. And if there's no water in there, the pump is on, you could actually end up damaging the, uh, the filter. And, and there's a note about that here. So when you get into a bandwagon, be sure to pay attention to that. But otherwise, yeah, the water does work when the, here I'll show you, when the pump is on, you might need a second to kind of sputter out, but you got hot and cold, works great. It's important to make sure that your water does have chlorine in it. You can smell it usually and smell the chlorine just to make sure that it's safe to use. And then a couple light switches. So there's like a shower light, which just kind of turns on that light there. And then the vanity light for, hey, what's up? For the light up front here. So, yeah. So yeah, guys, that's uh, pretty much it. I guess uh, if you have any questions about, you know, what it's like being in a bandwagon or if there's something you saw in that video and it didn't make sense or you're, you want to learn more about it, then definitely let me know. And uh, yeah, it looks like the support van just got here, so I got to go help them park their, their um, RV. But again, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Happy to answer anything and, and give more suggestions, feedback, etc. And I'll see you next time.